thank you for your interest in our RSNA case collection presentation, Hydrogen Peroxide Ingestion. My name is Leslie Nelson and I am a PGY3 at the University of Kentucky. Our patient is a 22-year-old male with past medical history of hepatitis C who presented to the emergency room with a right-sided abdominal pain after ingestion of what he thought was four ounces of moonshine. However, the ingestion was later noted to be a 35% hydrogen peroxide. The patient underwent a baseline CT abdomen and pelvis with IV contrast and was found to have portovenous gas, which is the accumulation of gas within the portal vein, is represented on imaging by arrows, and gastric pneumatosis, which is gas within the gastric wall, represented by the arrow heads on imaging. Here we have the coronal images from the CT scan, which again demonstrates portovenous gas represented by the arrows and gastric pneumatosis represented by the arrow heads. Additionally, the patient underwent upper endoscopy and was found to have caustic ingestion injury within the distal esophagus and superficial ulcerations within the stomach and erythematous mucosa. Here are selected upper endoscopy images demonstrating the superficial ulcerations. With the constellation of patient history, imaging, and endoscopy findings, the final diagnosis was made as portovenous gas and gastric pneumatosis secondary to accidental ingestion of hydrogen peroxide. Here, clinical information in this case was the most important factor in the final diagnosis as he had a known ingestion of four ounces of 35% hydrogen peroxide. The CT imaging and upper endoscopy findings help confirm the caustic ingestion injury. Top deferential diagnosis includes acute mesenteric ischemia, which is most commonly caused by stenosis or occlusion of a visceral artery. The patient may present with portovenous gas and pneumatosis on CT imaging with similar symptoms including severe abdominal pain, nausea, and peritoneal signs. However, if the etiology of symptoms is secondary to a thrombus or stenosis of a mesenteric artery, CT may also demonstrate a filling defect and or stenosis. Additionally, the patient will likely have abnormal labs, including leukocytosis, elevated liver enzymes, and lactic acidosis. Another top differential diagnosis includes pneumobilia, which appears as branching air densities with a central distribution of the biliary tree within the liver, versus the peripheral distribution as seen by the portovenous gas. Common etiologies of pneumobilia include recent biliary instrumentation, biliary enteric surgical anastomosis, and sphincterotomy. Another top differential includes medication-induced. Medications such as steroids and immunosuppressives can increase the mucosal permeability, which may allow gas to enter the bowel wall. Our patient reports that he was not on any medications at the time of presentation. And lastly, the differential diagnosis includes atrogenic, such as post-operative and post-endoscopy. These procedures may cause air to dissect into the bowel wall, secondary to mucosal disruption and or bowel distension. At the time of patient's presentation, he had not undergone any procedure to suggest an atrogenic cause. The final take-home message of our case includes that hydrogen peroxide is a colorless, odorless, oxidizing agent used as a household and industrial cleaning product. If one undergoes accidental or intentional oral ingestion of hydrogen peroxide, they can present with immediate abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and or shortness of breath. CT is the most sensitive imaging modality to diagnose complications such as extensive portovenous gas, gastric wall pneumatosis and thickening with surrounding mesenteric edema. Treatment includes hyperbaric oxygen therapy. If the patient is unable to undergo treatment immediately, they should be placed in Trendelenburg with 100% oxygen while awaiting a transfer. Here we have our patient's repeat non-enhanced CT of the abdomen and pelvis 18 hours post baseline and post treatment with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The images demonstrate resolution of portovenous gas and gastric pneumatosis with residual diffuse thickening of the stomach and surrounding edema as demonstrated by the arrows. Here is the same post-treatment CT and coronaplane demonstrating the resolution of portovenous gas and pneumatosis with residual diffuse thickening of the stomach and surrounding edema. 
I would like to thank you for your interest in our RSNA case collection. I would also like to thank my co-authors, Dr. Charles Myers and Dr. Amen Karana, and the RSNA case collection deputy editor, Dr. Douglas Katz. Thank you.